Let's bring in Dr. Joe Congeni, my good friend, Akron Children's Hospital Sports Medicine, and Joe Jarrett Allen, broken finger. We finally know some more here. Uh, Joe, go down this road for me because this really affects the Cavaliers going forward here. Yes, it does, Ray. And the, so the verdict is in, and it really took a long time. And a lot of people wonder, geez, what's going on over that period of time? And he was really assessing uh, his options, I'm sure, with medical people, with his uh, agents and his uh, family. And he decided to go without the surgery. And this may get him back quicker, um, hopefully in the long run, though sometimes it isn't always totally clear as to, uh, you know, how optimal the outcome is going to be. He broke the um, left middle finger, uh, and that is sometimes in sports circles that's called the long finger. And he, um, it's really important with your medical team to have somebody who specializes in hand and finger and wrist injuries. They're so different from other injuries, and we're so, so blessed that Akron Children's to have two excellent orthopedic hand specialists on our team, one of which I think I mentioned a few weeks ago with another injury has been the team um, – team uh, hand doctor and hand surgeon for the University of Akron for the last 15 years and just so much experience there with athletic and sports injuries. And, uh, and, and by the way, oh, my gosh, what a great game that was Saturday night and a great thrill for Akron U to make it back to the big dance, the tournament, which starts tomorrow. But all these decisions do affect teams with hand and finger injuries. There's actually three joints in the finger, Ray. The, the knuckle is the NP joint, it's called, metatar- metacarpal phalangeal joint. And the one that bends the most in the middle is called the PIP joint, proximal interphalangeal, fancy name. And the, the tip of the finger is the DIP. And so the big deal is, do these fractures go into any of those joints and will they affect the joint moving in the future? Will they affect arthritis in the future? And all those things had to be weighed back and forth. But as Jared Allen's team looked at the options, it was let's let this thing heal on its own and get back to play. And, and we're hearing estimates that he may be back in the next couple of weeks before the season's over. There's 15 games to go and then the playoffs. And so uh, it looks like he's going to be back sooner. Um, The other thing that really affects these injuries is there's two really important tendons and tendon groups. One allows you to flex the fingers and the flexor tendons, and the other allows you to straighten the finger, the extensor tendons. And we a lot of times see injuries that don't even affect the bones. It's not broken. It's an injury to the tendons, and that is obviously not the case here. There is a fracture. The problem with those tendons is they can actually pull on the fracture and make it heal uh, so that it's not straight or not stable. I use that word a lot. And obviously, in this case, they feel that the tendons are not going to affect the healing of the fracture enough to cause a major problem. So he is going to um, to go ahead and go without surgery. There's also ligaments in each one of those joints. And so people do sprain their finger, and they're talking about how swollen his finger is and um, – And so with some of the swelling in the finger, that's really the limiting thing right now about getting him back to play is the swelling in the finger. And there's a special person on our medical team called occupational therapists that deal with hand and finger injuries uh, uniquely. And we have a great team of occupational therapists also at our Akron Children's Sport Medicine Clinic that work with our hand orthopedic hand specialists. And so the OTs do the work here. Uh, I'm blessed I have two OTs at home. Two of my six kids have gone into occupational therapy, and they have lots of important roles on the medical team. One of them, though, is to make sure with hand and finger injuries that we get the full function and strength back in the hand. There's a lot of small muscles, and it's really important to regain that strength, especially for athletes. And uh, so all of the hand and injuries I see, I always a grip, I, I, uh, assess grip strength when I first see them, and then grip strength throughout the rehab process to make sure that they're getting all of the strength back in the hand and fingers uh, before they go back to play. And that's all going on right now with Jared Allen as they're trying to control his swelling, get his motion back, and get his strength back, and try to do all that in the framework of getting back with 15 games to go in the season. But it'll be interesting to see, and it's unique in almost every part of the medical team that we have you know, specialists, and it's really important in these injuries to have those 
uh, hand specialists like orthopedic uh, surgeons and occupational therapists is a part of our sports medicine team. Great stuff, Joe. Yeah, good to hear that about Jared Allen. Good to hear that the the break didn't need the surgery, as you mentioned. Thought about it for a long time. He's so important to the team off the court. Certainly care about him off the court as well, but he made the decision with no surgery. Joe, good explanation, my friend. Good talking with you again. I'll let you get back to work. Thanks, Joe. All right. Thanks, Ray. Have a great week. You too, my friend. Dr. Joe Congeni, Akron Children's Hospital Sports Medicine Center, getting into the situation with a broken finger for Jared Allen.